not a puppet. I'm a real boy. Ladies, gentlemen, and lying puppets of all ages, Lies of P is currently undergoing its early access for deluxe pre-orders, but is releasing to the whole wide world extremely soon. Some of you will have already started your journey, whereas others may have chosen to wait, but either way, especially early on, this game can be quite tough. One of the first questions you'll probably find yourself asking in a classic Souls-like way is quite simply, how can I get stronger and how can I do it right now? And while well, there are quite a few ways to do so very early in the game. First up, we'll go over a few tips of just ways to think about the game and the combat that you can make you better instantly just by thinking about the combat differently than you may have been before, and then we'll have the locations of some specific strong early equipment, regardless of which main stat you've chosen to dive into. Starting off with the tips then, first and foremost, I want to talk about the weapon system within this game. When you get a weapon, you technically get two pieces, just pre-assembled, the blade and the handle. In Lies of P, except for a few specific weapons, you can actually reassemble the weapons that you find to put different blades on different handles and pretty much any configuration that you want. That system is definitely a bit daunting at first, but the simple way to think about it is the handle defines the majority of the weapon. Handle defines the moveset, meaning the animations that you do with each of your inputs, and it also defines how the weapon scales with your stats. The blade part of a weapon decides the base damage that factors into the scaling, and it also decides the reach of your weapon too with the animations that you do. A big sword will of course reach farther than a small mace, as an example, and it also decides your damage type being slashing or blunt, that type of thing, which also does different damage to different types of enemies. The beauty of this game is because you can freely match blades and handles pretty much however you like, there are a ton of possible combinations. As well, it costs nothing to reassemble these weapons, so you should mess around with stuff as much as you like to find things that you enjoy. A second tip is that aggression is absolutely key to the combat in this game. When you guard an attack, you take chip damage, but it can be recovered by hitting your enemy quickly afterwards. In an ideal world, you would perfect guard every attack so you get some stagger value out of it and have no chip damage to worry about, but it will take a while of getting used to the game before you can do that 100% of the time. Perfect guard is the best way to play the game, that's important to be aware of, but sometimes timing mistakes can happen, and when they do, aggression tends to be more helpful than you'd expect. On a similar note, charge attacks seem really strong in this game. Poise breaks that make your opponent open to a fatal blow or a critical hit, whatever you want to call it, are where the majority of your damage will come from against things like bosses, honestly, especially early on in the game. Charge attacks do stagger damage build up more than normal attacks, and so if you are struggling with a boss, try working in more charge attacks and see if there's a difference for yourself. Whenever you are fighting humanoid enemies as well, this is a really important one, it's super easy to just go backstab fishing. So if you come across a stalker and you are scared that it'll be a tough fight, just rotate around them, constantly waiting for the free damage indicator to pop up because they will leave themselves open to it constantly. Then finally for our tips themselves, just a simple leveling tip, most people that are veterans of this game genre will be aware of this, but it bears repeating every time a game like this comes out for the first few days, level up your vigor, level up your vitality, especially early on. Damage is great, sure, don't get me wrong, but more health means you have more chances to make mistakes, more opportunities to learn from each death, see new attacks, and things like that. More stamina is also fantastic too, letting you guard for longer stretches and nastier combos, which is really just a massive deal within this game. Also, it's worth mentioning, you can respec in the game and reset your level points, but you can't do it until chapter 7, so you are committed for a pretty large portion of the game to your earlier choices, so make sure that you pick what you think you will like. And with those things covered, let's start talking about weapons themselves. Realistically, there are sort of three main stats going around. Motivity is your classic strength type stat, big weapons, big hits, big damage. Technique is your dex type stat, and smaller weapons that require a little bit more, well, technique than just swinging around a big stick. Then advance is essentially for elemental properties. Essentially like the magic type stat of this game, but the magic comes from technologically advanced weaponry with elemental properties built into them. As a result, we will cover one really good weapon that you can get relatively early on for each of these stat types, starting off with the motivity one then, the first new motivity weapon you can find is actually the Krat Police Baton. This is dropped from the big police puppet guy at the start of chapter 2, from the inside the house stargazer, walk out onto the balcony and cross the rooftops in front of you along the path that I'm showing you. This is pretty much a main path, so you will come across this enemy no matter what. You can ignore the random enemies along the way, but eventually you will find a hole in a building. Through here, there will be a ladder down to your little mini boss area with the policeman puppet in it. As far as the weapon itself that drops from him then, high motivity scaling, but the beauty of this one comes from the fact that disassembly is a thing you can do. The moveset of the weapon is simple, the handle is really good, forward slashes for the most part, but the directionality on them is fantastic. The forward momentum on them is really good too. So what we do is take the handle, which is the source of that motivity scaling and the moveset, both of those being the things that we like, and then you can stick that starting greatsword blade on the end of it, and just generally make a much more consistent, competent weapon than the starting greatsword as far as the general moveset feels, as well as being a much better weapon than the basic police baton. That said, 
I'm going to give you a second weapon for motivity, and only for motivity because this specific weapon is awesome, near the end of chapter 3, once you beat the big boss in Vanini's factory, which I won't be spoiling, you enter a bit of a mining area. Follow this until you reach a much more open room that has ladders in it, and climb to the top of the ladders following the path that I do here, and then you will see a chest at the very tippity top that you can open, and then from that chest you can pick up the big pipe wrench weapon. This is heavy motivity scaling. The damage on this thing is absolutely nuts. It is ridiculous. The only negative that it really has is that the reach of the weapon is pretty small because the blade is a wrench head. It's just a big square. The thing is, the handle is extremely good on this one, even on its own. And while switching out to having something like the starting greatsword blade on the wrench handle will result in lower damage than going full wrench, it will increase the reach and usability of the weapon dramatically while still having a great move set. So you can mess around with the different pieces to see what you like most, but this weapon, as these two pieces, are really, really good for motivity. Then for our second attribute, we have technique as a main stat, and for this, the best early acquisition is inarguably the boost glaive. This weapon is found in chapter 3 as you're wandering around past the workshop union entrance stargazer. You'll see this giant imposing advanced puppet down in the pit below, the puppet of the future. This is in fact a sort of mini boss, but the thing that you're after is actually behind this enemy in a chest at the end of the spot. You can even get the weapon without fighting the big guy if you want to, but he does drop helpful materials, so you probably still should kill him. Once you have this weapon, you'll probably realize why it's so good. The blade is a great sword blade, and it's actually better than the starter great sword blade 2 as far as the damage on it, but the handle is what makes this magnificent. Massive technique scaling, and the move set is just insanely good. The basic slashes have good forward momentum on them and good reach as a result, as it also has a great sword blade on it, but the charged attack is what makes this one super special. It blasts out a bit of a rocket boost from the back to fling you forwards. What this means is if you see an attack coming from an enemy, you can back off out of the range of the hit to dodge it positionally while charging your charged attack when the enemy hits the ground, then you release your charged attack to hit them in the face. The amount of momentum this thing can give you, the amount of positional control, genuinely transforms the way that the combat feels to be totally different, and with charged attacks being very strong in this game in the first place, this weapon just feels like a bit of a cheat code, honestly. Test it out with different blades, see what you want, but this handle itself is just super strong for something that you can find this early. Then our final weapon for advance is going to be the electric coil. This thing is awesome. The first proper advanced weapon that you can even find in the game, it is sort of a mixed advanced and motivity, so it is even good for mixing your stats around a bit and double dipping. This one is found very simply. From the inside the house stargazer at the start of chapter 2 in the story, there will be a wandering merchant set up in the room literally right beside you. He will sell this weapon to you if you ask him for 1200 ergo, which isn't even that much. This is your earliest way to take advantage of advance as a stat property, and a lot of earlier enemies in the first couple of chapters are actually really weak to shock damage, so this being an electric weapon is a really strong boon to have. As for usual, the handle itself decides moveset and scaling, so you can technically stick any blade on this to make it scale with the damage on an advance, but you will definitely get the best results with the base head itself with the shock damage on it to scale up too. The moveset is pretty simple, but effective enough. It really is the main combo of shock damage plus advanced scaling that makes this thing so good early in the game. After that, I got a couple of more recommendations of just early equipment in general. The first one is something that will just give you a massive amount more physical damage resistance at the cost of being a bit heavy. The LADAF 150 frame, which yes, does sound like the nude 4 pickup truck, it's actually just a massive boon to your armor, at the cost of being relatively heavy. The weight isn't ideal, of course, but if you can fit it into what you are running early in the game, the extra defense that it gives you is genuinely extremely good while you're getting to grips with the game and its timings. Then finally, we have the Fulminous Arm. You pretty much just have to get this, it's not really something you can miss. You unlock it after defeating the Scrapped Watchman boss in Chapter 2 by talking to Eugene at the hotel, but you may underestimate how good this actually is once you have it. This is a shock damage arm, and you can actually charge the attack by holding down the button to deliver a massive blow of stagger, bringing you more frequent fatal blows, which again, are generally going to be the majority of your damage against bosses, so it matters quite a bit how fast you can build up that stagger damage, which this does excellently. So essentially, I just brought this up to say, hey, you will get this, and you may not think that it's the best thing in the world because you get it for free, but you should probably use it. You should probably see how it works, and you'll be well rewarded for doing so. And that just about does it then, everyone. A handful of tips and a handful of specific weapons and other equipment that you can find and use to make your early journey in Liza P significantly easier as you get acclimated to the way that this specific Souls-like game works. Honestly, this might well 
be the best Souls-like game that I've played. It's at least the best one recently. It just feels extremely fluid. The story is fun. I mean, it's basically just Pinocchio, which is still crazy to me that they've done that. And the combat just feels right. It doesn't feel clunky at all, really, which is exactly what you would hope to see in this type of game. I hope you've all enjoyed this list of things to help you get more powerful within Liza P early on. I hope it helps your experience along and maybe helps you out with some of those difficult encounters that you may have otherwise really struggled with, as some of those early bosses really can be quite tricky. If you have any more tips for your fellow puppets, make sure to leave them down in the comments so we can all help each other out just a bit. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye